Welcome to Arkansas State University Museum, where we preserve and share collections of artifacts from the natural history and cultural heritage of Arkansas. Although we could tell a number of stories based on the collections, the one we want to share with you today begins millions of years ago and continues until the 1900s. The downstairs gallery features a timeline of fossils, moving from algae forms to sea life and on through the time of mammals, mastodons, and humankind, fossils span millions of years to about 10,000 years ago. Dig through time and feel tusks, turtle shells, and some creatures now extinct. You can't miss Mona, our mascot, the huge mastodon skeleton. The earthquake exhibit tells about the history and science of the New Madrid seismic zone. On the shake table, you learn how to build a strong tower that will withstand an earthquake, or just play with the biggest, coolest set of blocks anywhere around. As you go upstairs and enter the main gallery, you'll progress through time and see mammals and birds still abundant in the natural state today. You'll see Spike, the nine-foot-long alligator. Imagine what it was like to find him as you drained swampy land for farming. Before Hernando de Soto came to Arkansas in 1541, Native Americans lived here in thriving communities, some stationary and some traveling into the area each year for hunting. Some of the earliest Europeans in the state were trappers who traveled along waterways and old Indian trails hunting for beaver, bear, fox, mink, raccoon, and other valuable furs to sell at trading posts. Before St. Louis, and even before New Orleans, Arkansas Post, established at the Arkansas and Mississippi Rivers, was the trading center for this region, where both Native American and European trappers brought in their furs. The Caddo, Quapaw, Osage, Chickasaw, and Tunica are some of the tribes who lived here before being forcibly removed by the same series of laws in the 1800s that brought the Cherokee through Arkansas on the Trail of Tears. Look closely at the craftsmanship and artistry in the baskets, pottery, clothing, and other artifacts in each of the exhibits. Take the time to appreciate that everything you see in the Native American gallery was made by human hands. As we leave the Native American gallery, you may visit other exhibits along the way to living off the land, the story of settling Arkansas. Land in Arkansas was given by the government to soldiers. These veterans, and other people willing to brave the hardship of carving out a home on the frontier, cleared land, and got a crop in the ground as quickly as possible. They usually built a log cabin, made furniture, hunted, grew and preserved their own food, spun and wove cloth, sewed their own clothes, and either made do with what they had or did without. As you explore the Living Off the Land exhibit, you'll see a covered wagon. Press the audio button and hear about families traveling the Great Southwest or Old Indian Trail in covered wagons. See the exhibit with the dugout canoe. Look inside along the bottom of the boat, where you can still find the remnants of blackened wood as the maker burnt the wood and scraped it out to form the boat. In the same exhibit, look at the mussel shells that provided the raw material for the button industry that once existed along Arkansas waterways. Logging is still an important industry here in Arkansas. The next time that you're behind a log truck, imagine cutting all of those trees by hand, and you can get an idea of how hard early settlers worked. Speaking of hard work, look at the butter churn, laundry kettle, washboard, sewing machine, and hand tools that people used in their daily chores. The work of a family to keep a roof over their heads, food on the table, and clothes on their backs was endless, a trip to town provided a break from work, the opportunity to socialize and hear the news of the day, and the chance to buy provisions. Let's walk through Old Town. The small towns that dotted Arkansas always had a general store carrying tools, traps, housewares, and food. The purpose of the post office, pharmacy, bank, doctor, and dentist hasn't changed much since then, even if they look different. No radio, no television, no computers, Automobiles were a novelty. Most homes did not have a telephone. In fact, hot and cold running water was a luxury. As you stroll through Old Town, think about how life has changed and how it remains the same. Here at the ASU Museum, we preserve the authentic artifacts of our common heritage for your children's children and 
end, we share the story of human endeavors here in the Mississippi River Delta region. As you travel from Mastodons to Main Street, look for something that sparks a connection to your heritage. It's your story. Pass it on.